My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Good evening. We're so glad you guys could join us. We're wrapping up the year. Thank God. (laughs) 2020 (laughs) is almost over. Uh, Sarah's filling in for Diane. Hello. Thank you for having me on the red one. I have lots to whine about. (laughs) (laughs) I know. We we always do. (laughs) And, of course, the lovely Lou. (laughs) So, um, yeah. This has been the craziest year. I I mean, seriously, have you have you guys ever in your history remembered such a year that had such nonstop crazy shit every month? No. I think I'm getting a little desensitized. Like, oh, aliens landed. I just don't even okay, that's not that exciting anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. I don't even remember what was that they found they they had proof that was leaked that there really are aliens, right? There's yeah, UFOs. I don't know. Like any other year, I probably would have read that article, but this year, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Isn't that funny? They can come out and say Twilight was based on a true story. <laughs> Ooh. I'll be like, I'll be like oh, okay. <laughs> well, it figures. <laughs> <laughs> so... If 
somebody in the chat. You guys are all so smart. Oh, here. Yeah. See, I knew that they would do this. Rooster says, video footage from the U.S. Navy. See, our chat room is on it. So that's Ooh, what it was smart. with the UFOs. I know. And that, so, I mean, it's crazy, but not as crazy as everything else, right? Yes, it pales in comparison. <laughs> we can't even have a normal election. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's nuts. And I, so I can't remember if I've even been back since I've had COVID. I actually got sick. And then my parents got sick. So I had to leave and go out of state and take care of them. Um, nuts, you know, just crazy. But I actually... I had like the worst sinus infection. That's what it felt like. And I was really tired. Uh, like it took me a while to get over not needing a nap every day. And that's really something different for me. So I don't know if you guys had did you close. Did I what? A girlfriend of mine has, but nobody in my family. Did you lose smell and taste? Yes. And in fact, my smell is still off and it drives me nuts. Okay, because my girlfriend had it in early September, and she still can't smell anything. But it's kind of a blessing because she lives on a ranch with boys. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kept saying, like, of all times, times like, like, I it is good because my dog, dog has horrible breath, breath and my, my dog, dog can come up and look my face now, and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. Lou, didn't you have a family member that had it? That had COVID? Yeah. Yeah, my little sister had it. That's what I thought. And, That's nobody, what I thought. and nobody caught it from her. Not her husband, not her child, not my father, who she was with in the hospital. Not yeah. me, who was uh, sort of near her a couple times, but, you know, maskless. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know same with funny? my girlfriend. Nobody yes. in her family caught it, and she cooked, and I mean, they just went on about their business, figured they were going to get it. <laughs> well, that's that's what's so weird. So my sister-in-law, I mean, she's the only one, my sister-in-law and brother live next to my parents, and before I could get there, like, she was over there taking care of them, and she was like, okay, well, if I get it, at least it's early enough that by Christmas I'll be okay, I should be over it, and um, I can, I don't have to worry about isolating to see my own parents. So anyway, um, never got it, never got it. That whole time, she, actually she had, she tested twice, because she just couldn't believe they were coughing right on her. <laughs> and <laughs> she didn't get it. Yeah, no, didn't get it at all. Huh. How weird is that? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think it's kind of, I mean, it's good news. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's great news. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that it can mean is that people have, some people have some sort of natural immunity. They had something mm -hmm. at some point in their life that made them immune to it. I mean, right? Yeah. That's the only I agree. explanation. I totally agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. And it is funny because did you guys see that article today that said, what do you know? In Wuhan... <laughs> they actually did have more people that were diagnosed with COVID than they originally told you us. You don't all. say that. The really, communist <laughs> party told a lie. Oh my gosh, what is this world coming to? It's it's so funny because people keep saying, "Yeah, the Epic Times already reported on this last spring." Like, you know, they actually showed you the data. Right. They went in. They had actual data. And, you know, CNN is acting like, well, my God, where did this, how did this happen? <laughs> kind of like they did with hydroxychloroquine, <laughs> where they were like, well, look, <sighs> this drug works. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> they just pull it out when convenient. Uh, and yet now they need it. Now it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, now, yeah, now that yeah. we've done the damage that we wanted to do, we'll, you know, mm -hmm. we'll change yeah. the story. We'll tell the truth now. It's just crazy. And, and it, you know, did you hear Biden talk about how it's, he's so, it's all doom and gloom. If, if we're, we're going to talk a little bit what happened in Georgia today with the election stuff, but it wouldn't bite when or if, I, I'm certainly hoping for a, something to happen because this guy is 
he's awful. So Biden, did you hear his little speech? And it's all doom and gloom about dark days ahead of us. You know. Yes. Hope and change is gone. Hope and change has left the building. It's doom (laughs) and gloom. (laughs) I I know. I know. Oh, you know, I suppose because we have to have, we could not have uh, any sort of huge inauguration uh, for Biden. First of all, nobody would come. But secondly, um, except for, you know, yeah, he like could give four dates in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But could you see him giving a speech that whole time? No. <laughs> no. He would say, President Harris here. <laughs> right. I'm here to speak to President Harris and myself. I know. How many times is that now that he has called her? President-elect. Well, one is too many, but I think that's at least two, if not three. But one is too I, isn't many. Isn't it crazy? Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. Like a, it's like a Freudian slip. And they, he's already talked about, you know, suddenly getting sick and having to leave. So, yeah, already says three. Three times he's called, he has said, President Harris. That's, that's crazy, you guys. So it's not a coincidence. Or I suppose they're going to say it's a stutter. <laughs> okay. They're just floating the idea, getting everyone used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're saying um, Harris also made this slip. She did. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. the Harris Biden ticket. So, pretty so much she made the slip? Knows. Like she called herself the president? <laughs> she, I. She did. She said a Harris administration. <laughs> no. Joe, a Harris administration and then with Joe Biden as president. It, oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, she fixed, she tried to fix it, but I mean, you know, it's too late. We all know what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. So. Because you don't. Yeah, it's, that's nuts. Just nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's, okay, so. Can I just ask you guys quick, did you see the nurse videos where they're dancing during work? Yeah. Yes. How could you not see them? They're everywhere. Well, that's my point. So I, so this, this last one that came out, I just thought was so ridiculous that I was talking to my sister about it and she said, of course the other floors are slow, but the actual COVID floors, like it's, it's a pain in the butt. Like you can't. You're, you're busy. You're really busy. Mm-hmm. And it's not so much that the patients are so sick they need you. Every time you go in the room, you got to suit up. And, and it's a pain in the ass. So she's like, it's a, it's, it is, there's no, no time to be doing that. So my question is, if you find out that all of these nurses or, or doctors, whoever this is, actually work like on OB, <laughs> you know, like they have nothing to do with covid should we be calling them heroes? Well, they're they're all they're all in the outpatient surgery section, I think, which has pretty much been yeah, canceled. Yeah. But they're still coming to work and getting paid, you know, because of the COVID bonus or whatnot. I don't know. It's, I don't know. So funny. I have kind of mixed feelings about it. Like it doesn't really bother me. I could see where it's annoying and that if they're so busy, why aren't they busy? But it's kind of nice to see somebody not miserable. Well, I don't under- and that is true. Like, I, I honestly, I I did not, like, tweet, like, oh, my God, these people suck. Like, you know, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. But I do get a little annoyed when they're calling these people that really aren't doing anything heroes. And, you know, yeah. you shouldn't be so awful to these heroes. When someone like my sister, who actually <laughs> works on the COVID floor, you know, has a different <laughs> yeah I know I know and they don't even have like in some hospitals they will rotate staff in their in her hospital they do not rotate staff they keep because they don't want you know a nurse that works on the OB floor exposed to COVID because then she'd have to quarantine so they keep just you know they try to keep it as isolated as possible so you don't really even get a break so I <sighs> what I know about hospitals when my father was there during COVID he had um, heart surgery during COVID 
they weren't, oh, wow. yeah, they weren't dancing. These people were pretty doggone busy, even out, yes. even outside the COVID ward. So I don't get how these people are dancing, but you know, I really never cared. I mean, I do, I do think that it's kind of a slap in the face to all the healthcare workers that are busting their ass. But, yeah, that's true. But I'm not one, so who am I to say? So what do you guys think about the fact that in Colorado, we have a new strain, but clearly our governor isn't too concerned because he hasn't closed any tourism to ski resorts. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think that I, I think that you're you just hit on two things that are blowing all of this out of the water. So it's a um, and I know that everybody is saying that it's a strain, but my understanding is it's a variant, and that's not nearly as big a deal. Right, my uneducated understanding, and the other thing. Well, they're is, saying it's catchier. Well, yeah, they it's say easier to catch, but I also heard it, the symptoms could be less severe. Or... Yes, exactly. I don't know how they'd know, because the 20-year-old isn't very sick. So, <laughs> how would you know? Because he's 20. Well, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, I think some of that was, was speculation, because there hasn't been enough of it to tell. Like, like Jody said, it affects everyone differently. So, how will you know until a couple million people have been infected with it? I mean, might not take a right. million, but right. still. And honestly, I'd be surprised if it's one strain. I mean, it affects people so differently and is spreading so differently that I just, but I don't know. That, it doesn't surprise me at all that there's another strain. That's kind of the whole oh, point yeah. of this whole thing is that they're blowing. Everything gets either blown out of proportion or it's it's not... How do I, how I say it's some it's it's extremely hypocritical, right? So it's either yeah. the worst thing ever. Everybody stay home, ex- unless you work at a ski resort, because we're keeping those open. Because people from right. other states, <laughs> they can come here, but you have to stay home. It's insane. It is. That's the whole frustrating thing: is the picking and choosing, and choosing winners and choosing losers without any rhyme or reason. And I don't know if it's intentional, and they are doing that like punitively or if it's honestly like they just feel like they should do something so it's not thought through and it's not consistent and it's not feasible (laughs) it's both it's both some of it is definitely intentional even if it's just a matter of well but the ski resorts we got to keep how much money are we going to we got to keep that open right so you're not worth enough money so you close Mm -hmm. the ski resorts we need those taxes so they stay open. And it's punitive, even if it's not intentionally punitive. And it's it's greedy. And, and it, I mean, Oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. They're destroying someone else unless they keep, you know, unless they pay your expenses. If they pay your expenses or they pay my expenses, then I'm going to keep them open. But if you don't matter to me, then you have to close. Because, right. Like Sarah yeah. said, I've got to look like I'm doing something. So I'm going to close. I thought people don't, don't matter ours, was, ours was really interesting because in the last round of restrictions, they didn't restrict churches, which was a big deal the first time they restricted churches. Right. But they didn't restrict churches, but they did restrict retail and, like, coffee shops and so, we have coffee shops who are now saying they're religious facilities, <laughs> because they did that. I have a local one, and she's got a little sign out on the table that says that this facility is for religious meetings and purposes. If you need a Bible, there's one on the mantle. <laughs> that's, that's what you have to do, though. Yeah, it I is. <laughs> but, isn't it really, but isn't it rich that we see these governors... We see our mayor, like, you know, he gets to travel for the holidays, but he told people they could only have six people in their homes for the holidays, um, and they had to be all family, and, um, but you see Nancy Pelosi getting her hair done, you see Hollywood actors and actresses, not one of them has gone without, None of them you know, ever. getting their nails done, none of them look like it's been <laughs> months where they haven't been able to get something done. None of them ever oh had gosh. any intention to follow the rules that they set. 
So. Right. And another example of just doing something is um, in the state of California, of course, they're using California OSHA to um, put down a bunch of new regulations in the workplace. And so we've been trying to stay ahead of it. And uh, where I work, we have some facilities in California. And we have, like, a team of lawyers inside, outside counsel, HR, like, everybody going over this stuff, and nobody can make any sense of it and what's really required and what's really going to be enforced. It's so confusing. It's nonsense. Yeah, I totally agree. My my cousin that lives in um, Marina Del Rey was telling me that some of the restaurants that have put the outdoor you know, the outdoor seating areas that the homeless have kind of taken over. Oh, nice. So that's, <laughs> that's really great. <laughs> so nuts, nuts. And then you saw, you know what? I hope Janice Dean, do you guys follow her Twitter account? I don't think I do. She is the one that who's, who's Cuomo put her parents, you know, the nursing home thing and they, um, so she oh. has been a huge critic of Cuomo. The Fox News mm-hmm. weather girl, you know her. Yeah, she's a weather person, yeah. the weather girl. Weather girl. Um, she's brilliant. I don't. I hope. I hope everybody out there should follow her. I hope she runs for governor. Huh? She should run for office. She is. She's very apolitical, though. She's never, even though she's on Fox, she was never like. A political type or anything, and I don't think she really even enjoys this. But um, she is like yeah. tweeting daily, like she is. Yeah. She is done with Cuomo. Yeah, well, she lost both of her in laws. Yeah, nursing home that he flooded with COVID patients. So <laughs> I imagine. Well, and he's doing like it has. How has it affected him or his family? Not at all. Yeah. So Zero. I think that's one really positive thing that has come out of all of this is people are fed up with the shit and people who were not political or even I know people that thought they were Democrats are just done. They're seeing how ridiculous it is and they're getting more vocal. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I have neighbors that have never, ever I've never heard a peep out of them for politics. I've never seen a sign in their yard. And they had Trump signs up, and they are putting on Facebook about, like, they're going nuts about these shutdowns and our schools being closed. So, and, and our schools being closed. This is, this is what drives me nuts. Our schools are closed, but all of these kids can go to Walmart at the same time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Uh- my kids are home from school, and they're teenagers, so they're here. They are doing some school, but there's not really enough for them to do. And they leave, and they, like, go to the park and play basketball with stoners. They're having a super enriching high school experience. Oh, oh <laughs> God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Um, and they're all, so this is what, um, I have a sophomore. My older, my older kiddos, that's a whole other story, but my daughter is a sophomore, and they all, they're all they all hanging out in the Sonic parking lot, <laughs> car to car, chatting, talking with their friends, because they can be outside, and it's fine to be parked at Sonic. How stupid is this? <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so funny. It's so funny. And my son, my oldest son, his girlfriend... Uh, is a bartender and no, and mm-hmm. does waitressing. It's killing them. No tips, you know. It's killing. Oh, them. Oh yeah, that's awful. Yeah. Yeah. So it says can barely hear you, Lou. I said, so, well, I didn't. It didn't say it very loud. I just said yuck. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, is that better, guys? <laughs> can you hear Lou now? So anyway, yes. um, I was really nuts. talking. I was just kind of like semi talking. Talking ish, <laughs> <laughs> just whispering in the background. Yeah, mumbling under my breath. They know all. I know that's all guys, or almost all guys in the chat room. So I know they yeah. know all about mumbling under the breath. 
Yeah. I do that shit on purpose because then when they say what, you can decide if you really want to say that or not. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's very smart. Very, very smart. And I get it out of my system and then I have a minute to go, hmm, yeah, never mind. Sarah gets me. <laughs> Sarah gets me. You guys are way better than me. <laughs> Probably why I that's probably why I'm um uh not working anymore and you guys are. <laughs> so, <laughs> <maybe>. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um yeah, I I all the stuff about Newsom, I I honestly that he released um those uh sex offenders too because of COVID in prisons. Um, I don't get of that. He did. <laughs> right. Of course he did. I, I, you know, for years I've been hearing that, you know, this, that there are people in this country that actually want to undermine. I, I'm starting to believe it. And I'm starting to think that Gavin Newsom is one of those people. It's like, you couldn't fuck up worse if you actually were trying to fuck up. And, and I don't think you could, really fuck up this bad unless you're actually trying to, so if oh yeah if you're me and Gretchen goals, Whitmer right, oh my god right exactly if you're meeting your goals if you're happy with the job that you've done then you are actually intentionally trying to screw things up as bad as you possibly could so I guess kudos good job I, I isn't it funny <laughs> though it is like they're sitting there with a checklist oh what can we do now let's yeah. release the yeah. I know oh, yes I know. Oh, that, <laughs> And let's see what they say. You know, the let's press will, the press it. won't say right. anything. It's almost like they're trying to get a rise out of the press, like a a kid who's trying to get their parents to notice them, so they keep doing something naughtier and then naughtier and then naughtier. It, yeah, well, it's and I don't know if this one's just Washington. Or I'm sure it's other places, if not everywhere. But they've suspended um, evictions, so you can't evict anyone <laughs> during oh, yeah. COVID. So the property yeah. owner is on the hook for like utility bills and stuff, and they're yeah. not getting any rent, and just they're just using coronavirus to do that, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. That's we, my my relatives have apartment buildings in L.A. and mm-hmm. in, and in Buffalo, New York. Same. Can't. I mean, what do you do when you can't collect rent? Right. It's ridiculous. So. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. For some reason, they never remember that somebody actually had to purchase that building and has to maintain that building right. so people well, live mortgage. there. Right. Yeah. And some people stretch themselves so tight and they're depending on that income and then they could have lost a job because of COVID. So, like, how? where do they matter? Right. Oh. Right. It's oh, it's so frustrating. But I'm really, really, really hoping that um, it wakes up so many people that there is a huge red wave in two years. I could be completely by that time. We could be all a banana republic. So maybe it won't. Like <laughs> I have no idea what the Republican Party is going to look like in two years. I have no feel for it. No idea. See I. Guys? Um, well, let's talk about that as soon as we come back because we have some video clips we're going to play. Okay. Yeah, and I'll segue right. to that if you don't mind. We're, it's it's not going to matter what the party looks like, and it's not going to matter if anybody wakes up or not if they don't fix the fa- fraud problem. Ah, uh, true. Amen, sister. And now take us to break, Jody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign.
Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie-style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and... She takes the bite! Incredible! And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat basement, average six-inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spout. No, no, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. I think this committee uh, needs to hear this. He's just informed me of some very serious new evidence that he's just obtained from a Fulton County voting uh, polling place within the last hour. And I think this committee uh, needs to hear this. Okay, we'll give Can you do it? Just a couple of minutes, yeah. two minutes. So as we uh, all know, there's multiple teams working on this, and our technology teams into it. And as we spoke uh, early in the week and last week about connected devices, at this very moment at a polling location in the county, um, not only do we now have access to the devices to the poll pad, the system, but we are in. And it's not supposed to have Wi-Fi, and that's not supposed to be able to happen. So we've doc it, documented now it's communicating two ways in real time, meaning it's receiving data and sending data. Should never happen. Shouldn't be Wi-Fi. We've now documented it in real time, so we've sent down the data. But that's going on right there where everybody's voting. And I just wanted to get it into the record. Thank you. Well, that, okay, that so was today, people, at the Georgia hearing. Um, well, oh, my bad. <laughs> the next video play. <laughs> so, do you want to I, uh, do we get to dance now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we need to sing along to dance, this. <laughs> dance like nobody's watching. So, do you want me to explain <laughs> what he was saying, Jody? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I was just gonna say, guy, what's happened today? Let's listen to Lou. <laughs> so, that it was in the context of a larger hearing, so there wasn't a lot of um intro or anything done for this guy, but he he. His team was basically doing a, a real-time penetration test 
on the voting machines in Georgia. <coughs> and as the hearing was going on, they, they the, the, the hackers on his team, because that's what they are, what were getting access to the poll pads, which are connected to the Internet. He said that not only that, but they were they were in the system, which I take to mean they were in the part of the system that was supposed to be air-gapped. I, he didn't explain it, not in that clip. But there are parts, the, the poll pads and the tabulation servers in the setup are connected to the Internet, but nothing between them is supposed to be. And what's between them is the voting machines, um, the tabulation machines, and something that's not connected to the Internet to connect those pieces together. So there's an offline network and an online network. Well, anybody that knows anything about this can t will tell you that that's extremely dangerous because you once you put the Internet in proximity to a machine, it doesn't have to be hooked up to a machine. There are ways that hackers use Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or any, any other um, communications piece on, on a given machine, a, a, a network card, to hack machines that aren't connected to each other from one to the other. So they'll just jump from one machine to an, another using a Bluetooth connection that, you know, wasn't even supposed to be on, but they'll turn it on and they'll connect. So anyway, that's my explanation of it. I don't know if that makes sense or not. That's what he was saying. They'd gotten further than, than they expected to or further than you might expect them to, and they could send data to the machine as well as receive it from the machine, which, you know, that's the difference between a read-write, right? So if if, uh, if you protect something so that only you're, you can edit it, then it's read-only, yeah. it, read but if anybody can edit it, you know, it's, it's write-enabled. And basically, those they write enabled those machines because they could send data to them. If you can send data, you can change data. If you get that far, the chances that you're going to get even further are eighty percent on the low end. So that's my assessment. so so um, so you we just talked about Chris Krebs. He he was the one that was fired that was working the cybersecurity, um, you know, in our government. Did, so his tweet about it being a nothing burger, um, what would you say to that? Well, so Chris does this a lot, and he ends up stirring up more shit and creating more rumors than he dispels when he does it. So between the truth, which was this penetration team got beyond the poll pads and into the system, and that's as much information as we have in it, have with it, Someone, somewhere along the line, blew it up until they hacked the voting machines. And, the, and this entire system is a voting system, and every machine in it is a voting machine. But when you say voting machine, people will take it as the machine that you, the touchpad that you make your choices on that prints out your ballots. So Chris, yeah. Chris Krebs said... <laughs> That you can't hack a voting machine from a poll pad. Well, first of all, that's not proven. Show, show me a hacker and I'll show you the hacker that can do, or show me a room full of hackers and one of them can do that, right? One of them will be able to jump from the poll pad to the voting machine. So he doesn't know that. And the fact that he'd say it tells me everything I know to need to know about everything else that he said. But also... That's not what anybody said, right? The guy said right. they, the guy said they were in the system. That's it. And that's all we know and that's that's what the truth was. Chris did not say that. He made it sound like the end. He he wrote it in a way that someone who wasn't familiar with technology would assume that he meant the whole thing was a rumor and not true and didn't happen. Right, right. And the reason why it's pertinent is because Dominion is out there now suing or, or our, um, Smartmatic or whoever. They're all out there uh, threatening um, defamation lawsuits to news agencies and to different people. And 
they're claiming there is no way there could ever possibly be fraud. And, I mean, now we, or, you know, now we see that, you can get into these poll pads. So I don't, I'm I don't skeptical know. Of what do you, what? I'm, I'm skeptical of every sweeping statement, particularly in, in regards to technology. If anybody ever tells you there is no way this can ever happen, then they're, they're probably selling you a lot of bullshit. But if they say that about a hack or a computer being hacked or a system being hacked, they are guaranteed bullshitting you. Because that's not true. Anything that can run can be hacked. Right. So, so a better hacked. response would be, it could be hacked and this is how we're preventing it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so do we have that video or that audio of the Dominion stuff? Uh, yes, we do. Where they, they, they actually are giving testimony that they're squeaky clean. <laughs> yes, we do. Where did that audio go? Here we go. I testified today uh, that our systems are designed to be uh, in a closed uh, area network uh, and that we do not have wireless uh, capability on our systems. Um, and uh, so, and with me on. So that was the CEO of the company. Now listen to what his vice presidents say. also have John Poulos, who is our president and CEO, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. What wireless chipset slash modem does the hardware have? Uh, we support a variety. Um, so uh, it, it's really up to the jurisdictions, what technology they want to use, what's compatible with their, with their networks. Currently, in some jurisdictions, we're using uh, uh, basically a modem that is a 3D modem. GSM, uh, but we can support multiple varieties of models that can be. Okay, I won't play the rest of the clip um, unless you guys think that we need to. They just go through like five, three or four different VPs for the company that say the exact opposite of what the CEO said. What the CEO said <laughs> is our system is built to run on a closed area network, which is an offline or off the internet network that I was talking about before, but what his VPs say when they're training the precincts where they have their voting machines is our systems are built to run on both a closed and an open area network. So they straight up contradict what the CEO said. Y'all well, crazy. <laughs> So, Sarah, you so you hadn't seen this yet. What is your right. opinion on what you just all heard? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. Like I said, just nothing shocks me anymore. <laughs> it doesn't really surprise me. Of course, they hacked into the voting system. Why not? <laughs> it's 2020. <laughs> Why not? This is, this is like the truest statement that's been Live said. in a... <laughs> I mean that's insane. Yeah. Well, why do you why do you guys think? Okay, even if you are even if you think like Tim like Tim Pool keeps saying from Timcast, he keeps saying uh, he thinks that the, nothing's going to change that Biden is still going to be president. But he's like, why are they saying that it's not like? Here we see the video of the ballots. We see this. We hear this. We talked. We've heard testimony. Clearly, there really was fraud. Why are we pretending that there wasn't? So, one thing that the ACLJ is doing is, um, at which I wish they had started two years ago, but they didn't. And uh, True the Vote is is getting pretty active doing this too. But suing the ACLJ is getting ready to. Um, start a series of lawsuits about the fact that we can't do anything, no matter how much fraud we see, about mm -hmm. our elections. And the courts say you can't bring it before and you can't bring it after. There's no way. Um, the fact that people cheat should not surprise anyone. The fact that we can't do anything about it after they cheat should shock and appall everyone. And I think that's what's so frustrating about it to me is that 
Like, we all knew that it was going to be a problem. Everybody was saying they're going to cheat. The vote's going to be inaccurate. The the paper ballots is not a good system. And then it just happens anyway. And we watch it, and we can't do anything about it. Well, the fact that they were... The fact that um, Zuckerberg paid for the people in Pennsylvania, the ones that, you know, blocked the the, uh, viewing and put up those Michigan. big yeah, yeah, pieces Michigan. of cardboard. Um, w- the fact that you find out, you know, when people keep saying there were two Republican people that got to see it, there were two at each table, and, there, and you find out now there really weren't. How can any ballot be legit? How would well, we it's okay, Jody, because it probably wasn't enough to change anything anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, well, <laughs> I mean... That's an entire day of voting. I don't know. It just seems pertinent. But it's just, I don't know. To me, it's crazy. And that one guy that just came out with the fact that the surnames, did you guys see that in Pennsylvania? In um, the one county, how many surnames that were supposedly on the voter list that, like, that aren't even in that county? So I, I, there's just so many bizarro things. That maybe you believe it, maybe you don't. But why wouldn't everybody say, let's please investigate it so it goes away? Yeah, well, yeah, you would think that they would want to. I'm not doing this every election. Right. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, let's fast forward to next week. And in Lou's state, where they are having the Senate runoffs, which supposedly all of the sudden... Um, the polling is showing that the Democrats are ahead. And Stacey, boy, what does Stacey Abrams claim that she's got all these new, over 700,000 new voters signed up? Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's as miraculous as her um, refusal to concede an election. <laughs> yeah, or the fact that her sister, was it today or yesterday? Her sister's the judge that just shot down cleaning up voter rolls. They have people that actually have they know that they had a change of address. They might even live in a different state, and they're not letting them take them off the voter roll. Like, right. I don't, I don't, I do not. It's understand. okay, Jody. It's not enough to make a difference. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. It's just, of course, somehow they have standing. That's what right. I saw somebody no. tweeting today. I think it was R.A. Fleischer. Like, isn't that interesting? Like, nobody has standing, but somehow these people have standing, and they were able to get this done. Hmm. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know who the lawyer was on that case, right? No, who was the lawyer? Mark Elias from Perkins Coie. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, so let's talk about that. Those that the left was putting all of their money into their law teams, into their legal teams, because they knew they were going to steal it, right? So they knew that there was going to be challenges. So they've been working on this since, what, you know, June? May? (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, in Georgia, they've been working on it for a couple of years. Oh, I believe that. I think when Stacey Abram lost, I think they've been working on it. Yes. Trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, I hate so. to tell you guys this, but in the state of Washington, we've had paper ballots for, I don't know, 10 years. We have not had one Republican candidate win a major race since we got paper ballots. <laughs> but are you, but are, are they running through a machine though? No, she's, she's talking about mail ballots. So oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm talking oh, about mail oh, ballots. I'm just oh. saying that once they get this, I'll figure okay. it out and how to cheat. Like, you can't undo it. What do you do? Uh, I'm in Colorado. <laughs> we have the same issue. They suddenly did all, you know, um, uh, you know, the the vo- they changed the way we vote, and then they changed the the fact that you could do same day voter registration, like a lot of these states. And boom! What do you know? We're completely blue now. Completely blue. Our completely House and blue. Senate in the state too, and we were a red state. Isn't that interesting? It's insane. Yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. These, yeah, mail-in ballots, we all went to, like, it just, I don't know, it went crazy. I still, I don't know. We, we'll see what happens next week. I don't know. What do you? What is your predictions on this whole 
January 6th thing that, you know, the, the challenging the electoral college thing. What are your predictions? Sarah? I'm doom and gloom, Jody. I've got nothing nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, because it, it's 2020. I mean, <laughs> what about you, Lou? I got nothing. I don't yeah, have a prediction. I, I don't have a feeling. I don't, nothing. I, honestly, it's been such a horrible year that I'm hoping that the Democrats have bad news for once. <laughs> <laughs> you optimist, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that it sucks for them and it's good for us. But, but you know, I, I, I have always, you know, the, the, you know, the glass half empty, the glass half full. You know, that whole thing. I'm I'm usually the, the you know, the realist. You know, it's yeah. tea or whatever that joke is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's tea. laughs> so, I, I don't know. I don't know. I need to know what happened. I need to know if you poured it in there or poured it out of there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Working as a nurse for so long where I'd have to cat get those specimens. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's not a big deal to me. Um, so in the chat room, if you guys have predictions for the sixth, um, give us your, your uh, gut. If it's, uh, nothing or it's something. So it is funny how some people are so positive. It's going to be like my sister-in-law. She's like, oh yeah, it's great. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> like, how, how can you- anyone have any feel for it? Like, no, I don't know. I was thinking maybe I'll just start voting for things I don't want because that seems like it might be a good strategy. Oh, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Maybe we can all just vote the opposite way. Yes. That's that's not a bad idea. And actually, my vote doesn't even really probably get counted anyway in Colorado. Mine definitely doesn't. Mine does not in Washington. I know, I know. It's so funny because I suspect if we suddenly, if if we do, if we go to this blockchain thing of voting, if we actually do that, um, it'll be interesting to see if it's a more accurate. Did we lose Jody? Yeah, we lost. (laughs) Okay, well, it was just her then. I didn't know if I lost both of you, to be honest, but um. Yeah, so we did a show on, we did a couple of shows on blockchain, actually, and, um, you know, there there are ways, even though it's never been hacked, doesn't mean that it can be, There's, there are other ways to compromise, um, which, which I think is pretty interesting, so it's, yeah, that would be great, but it also would have vulnerabilities, so... Yeah, yeah. Really uh, do you do think? It. Do you think that, like, if you had to pick, like, an ideal, like, for now, do you think that's better than what we're doing? I, I mean, think, clearly, clearly, what we're doing sucks. I think nothing <laughs> Unless, will ever be. Better. Maybe it's all video camera. Maybe it's all live feed, and you can watch it on your local PBS station, and you can be tuning in. It's like a Zoom, like all the different polling places. You're you could. You know, go on a live webcam on the computer. I don't know. So the the I I don't think that there is a form of voting out there that we haven't found yet that's going to be so much better than any form that we've ever had. And the the problem that we have is securing, um, monitoring, and. Uh, you know, oversight, really, because, I mean... Yeah, the chain of command, yeah. Well, the chain of custody and um, just abiding by the law. And, and we saw we saw courts. This is a problem. We saw courts um, validate the breaking of laws in multiple states. Mm-hmm. And um, that's... It. If we have that, I mean, blockchain is not going to do us any good whatsoever, though we'll find a way around... The system, as long as you continue to reward and not punish people who defraud the rest of the country. 
I think you just hit on half of everything that's wrong right now is that nothing's being enforced. There is existing law, there is existing policy, there's existing procedures, and none of it's being followed and nothing happens. Right. Right. In this many is- regards, not just voting. <laughs> oh, right, right. Many- but it should be so sacred, our voting. It should be so mm-hmm. sacred that when you find out that there is somebody that isn't following the rules, like just because of COVID, they're suddenly claiming that, you know, the Republicans couldn't be in the room because there was too, there would be too many people. I mean, that should have been shot down immediately. And I don't understand why every county in the entire United States isn't run by both a Republican and Mm -hmm. a Democrat. Why are these counties this Fulton County, this, you know, um, the county in De- the Detroit, the county in Pennsylvania. Why is it all just run by Democrats? I don't get how they get to make the rules. So We're not um, mean enough. That, that's, you know what? And then you know what? We're all working. Well, uh-huh. like we're all busy working. <laughs> and- <laughs> 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 but that, I, do you think that's something to do with it? I don't know. It's just, it is interesting. So in the, in the chat, so I asked them to comment. So um, everybody's basically saying there probably will be, um, you know, debates, you know, debates. They're going to have objections. People will talk. But at the end, it's going to be a long, long day and nothing will change. That's their, that's what they think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, oh, and. Yeah. Their chat room is smart. You're right. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Smart. And it should be. Voter fraud should be punishable by life in prison or death. As someone who is anti-death penalty, that says something. Well, that's, yeah, there you go. That, that is very, that's very true. Because if you don't enforce any punishment then, I mean, it's just nuts. There's, it's, nothing's ever going to change. So I, whoever is willing to cheat wins. And who's willing to cheat? Not nice people. Yeah, you're not <laughs> very, people that you want in charge very true. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, Blue, your prediction for Georgia next week? I, I don't have that either. I mean, I just really think that I'm just, like, blocking all emotion when it comes to anything like that. <laughs> you're, you're, you don't want to have any hope. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I don't not getting be, any expectations up I here. don't want to be emotionally invested. Yes. That's what my, my brother refuses to listen to anything about this since, like, the, I don't know, December 2nd or whatever. Because he said, you know what, I'm just, I, I have my hopes up. And I see all this fraud, and all I can say is, "What the hell? Like, how do you? How does everybody not see this stuff?" And you know, it just makes you even more and more frustrated. So. Yeah, could not agree more. All right. Well, Sarah, thank you for filling in so much tonight for Diane. Diane will be back after. Um, she's she's been on a committee. It's been really awful. It's not. It, there's been like so many things that keep popping up, and um, so her last six months has been nuts so it's all going to change that meeting that meeting time is going to change to i think she said monday nights is that right lou so we will have her back yeah okay but thank you for having me i loved it oh yeah we loved having you so all right well thank you lou for coming on why don't you tell everybody where they can find you guys you first sarah oh i'm founders girl on twitter don't look for me anywhere else (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, I will be back here Monday night at 10 with my buddy, Ordy, um, to talk about stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, important stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, and um, we, I am APL Mom, and hopefully you guys tune in, because um, I think next week's going to be pretty exciting. So, thanks for listening tonight, guys. Night. Good night.